everyone, my name is Chloe and I am here today to do the Finally Fall book tag. So I've done this tag before. It's been years. I can't remember which year. I've been on YouTube since December of 2019 and um, I, I don't remember what year I did it, but it has been a while. But you guys, I normally, my husband takes my kids uh, outside or somewhere while I film. If you can hear today, that is not the case. So pardon any little voices or stomping or interruptions. But um, anyway, so I've done this tag before. And I did not go back and watch it because, one, cringe. And, two, I didn't want to repeat any of the answers. And, like, it, once you get it in your head, it's kind of hard because these these books are all books that I have read in the past year. So, um, let's just get into the tags. I was tagged by Celestria. And, you guys, if you don't watch her channel, you need to go watch her channel. She is great. She's young. She's fun. She reads a lot of stuff differently than I do. Um, she reads a lot of Christian fiction and a lot of fantasy and um, Christian fantasy, I would say. And, like, our reading taste doesn't always line up. But, like, her personality is just great. I love watching her. And um, you should, too. So, I will have her linked down below. But let's get into the question. So, um, number one, in... In fall, the air is crisp and clear. Tell me a book with a vivid setting. So I just recently read Bright Lights, Big Christmas by Mary Kay Andrews. And you guys, this is about a woman who goes um, to New York City with her brother. And they have a tree, a Christmas tree farm in like North Carolina. So they're taking all the Christmas trees to sell them in the streets of, of New York. And uh, the dad and brother have done this for years. So they have like a set spot. And you guys, the New York at Christmas vibes were so strong. It was so good. It was like, I love that. I mean, I love New York at Christmas. Like I love reading about it. I've been there once in like November. So I've kind of experienced it. Um, and I love it. And so the vivid setting was definitely on point. It, it was very New York, very Christmas, and it was a great book. So I would definitely recommend they, they live in this little like camper and, uh, the story is about like a man and his young son who are, um, like kind of neighbors and there's a little romance there, but there's also like the whole community around them. It's, it's so strong. It's so good. I would definitely recommend Number two is Nature is Beautiful But Also Dying, a book that is beautifully written but also deals with a heavy topic like loss or grief. So I'm going to say um, The Other Year by Rhea, Fr Rhea Fry. I just recently read this as well, and this is about, um, it's a book told in two timelines. So at the beginning of the book, we meet our main character. And she is a single mother. Um, the father is still involved, but um, they're not married, and he is very, he travels a lot, and he's kind of in and out, um, not very frequently around. So for all intents and purposes, a single mother most of the time and um she, her and her like nine-year-old daughter go to the beach and in one storyline then the daughter is playing under the water while she's looking at her phone and uh then she like stresses out because she doesn't see her kid and then her kid pops back up she's fine um in the other circumstance she is playing with her like looking at her phone and the daughter's playing in the water and the daughter does not come back up and she drowns and so it's the two stories of what would have happened um, given either either path and it's kind of it talks about like what is kind of inevitably going to happen and um, kind of like the role of our choices and um, not in like an all at all shamey way but like it was just it was it this was an anxiety spiral written by the author that um, she never really wanted to have kids and then she did and um, found out how much her daughter means to her and like the anxiety spiral of like what would happen if something happened to her and how your world would be ruined and changed. And so it's a really heavy book. Definitely one to read if you are in a good space that you think you can handle it. Don't read it if you're not. Um, but it was a really unique idea and I really enjoy her writing style. So there's that. Um, number three, Fall is Back to School Season, a nonfiction book that taught you something new. So I read Why Has Nobody Told Me This Before by Julie Smith. And it's all just about how connected your brain, your body, all of that kind of things are. And like how um, stimulus from the outside and what you focus on, all of that, how it impacts your entire like brain and body and 
how some things are in our control and some are not. Like there's so much and there's very practical to do's on how to change your mindset or change whatever. Um, I did listen to that on audio and I definitely think it that it did a disservice. Um, I'm still waiting for the physical copy. It's been months and um, I think it's definitely one that you need a physical copy to kind of work through, think through, take slowly. Um, and so I really want to reread it again, but even, even consuming it on audio taught me some things. I'm also going to say Quiet Girl in a Noisy World by Debbie Tung because you guys know lately I've been in my graphic novel era for sure. And um, I would not consider myself an ex- an introvert. Um, but my I have some family members and some dearly loved ones who are. And, it, and I think I have a daughter who is. And it definitely made me understand more um, kind of their feelings. Like even, even if it's not, um, like even if they don't, have proclaimed like social anxiety, just that kind of need to re rejuvenate alone. Um, is something that I, I really have a hard time relating to because I love to be busy. I love to be with people. I love all those things. And so, um, understanding that need introvert introverts experience is, um, helpful as a mother and as a friend and all the things. So, um, next is, in order to keep warm, it's good to spend some time with the people we love. A fictional family household friend group that you'd like to be a part of. So this is kind of a weird answer, but I'm going to say Slightly South of Simple by Christy Woodson Harvey. That That is a story of a mother who is widowed and her three adult children. They're all coming back to the mom's house in Georgia for um, various reasons. And uh, they have kind of been somewhat not estranged, but not super close. The sisters have not been super close. Um, and the mom even has some, some like, uh, favoritism between kids and all that kind of stuff. But just that like family, um, they're all kind of just there figuring stuff out together, figuring their own lives out together. And, um, it, it's just a cozy family time. It's not cozy like Christmassy or even fall. It's set in the Georgia coast. Um, but I just love that. I love like, and I could envision myself both as the mother and as one of the daughters. Um, and yeah, I just, I would love to be a part of any of those kind of close family, um, family groups. Next is, uh, the colorful leaves are piling up on the ground. Show us fall colored spines. Okay, so I did not prepare for this. Let me grab some. Okay, so we're going to call it here. Um, I did not realize how many orange and yellow spines I have, but uh, so pretty. Love this color. Um, Yeah, these Kristen Hanna books are some of my favorites. Um, Lisa Genova, also a favorite. This is How It Always Is um, was a good one. And this, uh, The French House, it was, it's actually in my unhaul pile, but for some reason it's on my shelf still. So, um, yeah, there's your false spines. Now, let's see. The next one is uh, Fall is the Perfect Time for Some Storytelling by the Fireside, a book where somebody's telling a story. So I am going to say The Whispers by Ashley Aldrain. So this one is um, about a, na- a suburban neighborhood where one night they're having like a block party and... Um, Somebody, like the neighborhood overhears one of the moms losing her cool on her like 10 year old kid. And then um, later that kid um, falls out of his window and is very, very badly hurt in the hospital. And um, the neighborhood is kind of wondering if the mom has anything to do with it. And it's a storytelling of what has happened in the past year. So the, the neighborhood block party happened where she yelled at the kid and then a year later, um, we get to see kind of how things unfold. So it's telling the story of the family as well as the neighborhood. And uh, yeah, it, it was so good. I love Ashley Audrain, so I loved it. Next is The Nights Are Getting Darker, a dark, creepy read. And I'm going to say, um, because I'm trying to stick with books that I've read really recently, I'm going to say The Only One Left by Riley Sager. So this is about... Uh, a woman who is infamous for, it's kind of Lizzie Borden-esque. She is, um, was never convicted, but she was accused of killing her entire family. She was the only one left. And now she's in her 80s. You know, this happened when she was young. Now she's in her 80s. And she has had um, polio, I think is what it was. Debilitating things where she can only move one of her hands. Um, she can't speak, so she can write on a typewriter with one of her hands. 
And it's about her and the woman who comes in to be her caretaker. And this one could also be a vivid setting. The house was very much a setting um, that, that was that was creepy. Um, and it just kind of added to, like, there was, like, a chant about uh, this gal, Lenora, Lenora Hope. Is that her name? Um, and, like, just kind of thinking, because she can't speak or anything, it's just very creepy. Like, I put myself in those shoes, and I would be very, like, edgy, because uh, our caretaker obviously lives there, and things are a little weird, so, yeah. Um, next, The Days Are Getting Colder, a short, heartwarming read that could warm up somebody's cold and rainy day. I'm going to say anything by Richard Paul Evans or Donna Van Leer. Both write, well, Donna Van Leer wrote like a, the Christmas shoes or something. It's a whole series that they're really short and really like heartwarming. R Richard Paul Evans, the same. His are all very short and um, they're all like emotional and hard, but then like have a heartwarming moral at the end. And um, I really enjoy both those authors and think you could do no wrong. So um, based on what I've read anyway. Next is Fall Returns Every Year, an old favorite that you'd li re like to return to soon. Um, so I'm going to grab it. Okay, here's the book that I would love to return to. Love the One You're With by Emily Giffen. So this was written a long time ago, and I just have vivid memories. Um, my mom and I went, gosh, it must have been college. Like I must have been going to college, or was I pregnant with my first kid? I can't remember. Um, at some point, we were going to the nearest, like, Nebraska Furniture Mart, and um, it was a while from us, and so she drove, and I read this the whole way, and, like, we sat in the parking lot and did not go in until I could finish this because it was so good, and I just remember it, like, hitting home. Um, I think it's about, like, I don't even remember details, except it's about... Um, a woman who is, let's see, how can I truly love the one that I'm with when I can't forget the one that got away? And I, like, the one that got away trope is something that just interests me so much uh, because it's that, like, road not taken. That is something that I love to see in, I don't care what kind of book, like, I love to see that rabbit hole of the road not taken. And this one definitely fits that bill, and I've been wanting to reread it so much, so maybe this fall will be the time. I don't know. Um, and then fall is the perfect time for cozy reading nights. What are my favorite cozy reading accessories? So I am going to say, um, this cup that never is very far from me. My cup runneth over Psalm 23, five. I think we we're actually just talking about this cause this is my favorite cup. I use this a lot. It's a really nice big size. Um, and it, it's like that stoneware and I just love it. And we're, my daughter was just saying, where did you get that cup? And I don't know. My husband thinks I maybe got it at Cracker Barrel years ago, and I can't remember. But this is by far my favorite cup. So uh, I will always have it. And I, like, I definitely have the emotional support coffee that, I mean, it's always, always full. Um, and it sits in the microwave multiple times a day. But I love it. So this and um, I have a, my sister got me a Beauty and the Beast blanket. It's upstairs and because we're all very attached to it. And so it moves around between girls' rooms and all that kind of stuff. But it's a Beauty and the Beast blanket that is like the stained glass window. And it is like so soft, so cozy, perfect size. So if I could snuggle up with that. Um, this, ideally some football on in the background, that would be like my cozy reading after like a morning spent outside. Um, that would be like my ideal cozy reading. And then, um, lastly is to tag some people. If you haven't done this, I tag you. Um, I'm not going to tag anybody specifically because this has been going around a while. So I don't know who's done it and who hasn't, but I would definitely love to hear your answer. So if you've done it, let me know. If you don't have a channel, let me know your answers. And thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one.